Good afternoon my crafty friends. I would like to share a box with you today. I had a special request from Miss Kerry Lydon, or Mrs I should say, uh, which she would like to make a box to put a card into. Now this one here will hold cards and envelopes. I will grab... Oh, can I... <clears throat> oh, I haven't got any floating around. That's unusual. Anyway, I'll fold one up now just to show you. Um, I think it will take up to about 12 or more depending on what embellishments you have put onto the front of your cards and envelopes. So as you can see, they fit nicely inside. The box dimensions measure one inch, one inch deep, four inches by six inches. So I think that that was a, a pretty good size for a box. Um, so I thought I'd share it with you today. This one you can see I've had it for a while. I've, I've done this one with Serenity on the top. I'm just making the box up today. I'm not going to embellish it. That can be your choice of what you would like to do. Now the first thing I would like to show you is that we need to cut the front, the box base down. Now this is this is the lid. The lid measures seven. Oh, I need to read my instruction. Seven by eight and a half. We're not doing anything to that at the moment. We're going to leave that as is. But for the base, now it's easier to for me to tell you to cut it at seven and a half by nine inches, and then we're going to trim it just fractionally. And on your trimmer here, where the plastic line is here, we're going to use that's the in there is the groove for cutting we're just going to lay it up on here and cut just a small amount away it's about uh, about a sixteenth of an inch so even if it's like that so that I can just see a little bit of the clear we're not cutting a great deal off it's just a slither and we're going to do that on one side and one end just like so. So that's all we're doing, just trimming that off. And that now will allow the box to fit in. That's about a sixteenth of an inch. See those little marks in there? The little marks? That's about a sixteenth of an inch we've cut off. So that is, that's just going to make the box base and the box lid fit together in a snug fashion. Where did I put the other one I made? So I made one before, so when it opens and closes, that will just fit it in snugly. It doesn't fall off, it just stays there because it's just that tiny bit, the base is just a tiny bit smaller than the lid. So that's what we're going to be doing now. <clears throat> and you don't have to touch the, the, the top section, it was just the base. So now we are going to score our base. Now our base we're going to score at half an inch and one and a half inches on all four sides. So half, one and a half. Oh, I hope you can see that. Yep. So half and one and a half. Half, one and a half. Half an inch and one and a half. So that's on all four sides. Now for our lid, <clears throat> we're going to score it at half an inch and one and a quarter inches. This is a three quarter inch section in here. That's what gives you the, what I call the finger pull section here. So you can hold one hand here and lift the lid on and off with ease. So that's that section. There are many of these boxes out on um, the penny. So, you know, you can find them. I've actually got two other boxes. I was having a, a day of working out what would be the best way to make the boxes. And these were the other two that I've got. This one here is a lift-up one where the cards will slide in. And, oh, get that back in. and this one here is just the, the flip-top one which will hold quite a few cards and they both measure one inch by four inches by six inches so I've kept them all the same just in different ways and over the next few weeks we'll be making them uh, to, to put up so that you can make these and they'd be nice to fill up with cards and give to someone for Christmas you know someone who's really hard to buy for and you think what will I give them you can quite easily make them <coughs> excuse me 
um, a really nice um, box for cards because I know I have excess cards all the time. Where did I put that? I don't know where I put my bone folder. Cheeky, so I will. I'll have to use this one. So we're going to fold and burnish all the score lines. Now I like to always, you don't have to have this second, this little score line here. I like to have it because I think it adds strength to the, to the sides of the box. So we'll do this one as well, get them both done at the same time. And I'm using our new mulberry, which I think is rather gorgeous. And this one here is pewter. I always think the pink and blue, go, uh, pink and grey go really well together. And the other box I made was in Wildberry, which is our colour of the year, and black. So that's our base. So what we're going to do now is we are going to cut up now. I think I might go this way this time. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut up to the second score line. So you're cutting past the first up to the second on both sections. Then I like to do a little diagonal cut here to get rid of that corner and leave a little bevel there, little notch mark. Trim that section off, cut a wedge off either side of the tab and then on this piece here I like to cut a bit too. So and I'm going to repeat that on all of the corners. So cutting up to the second score line, cutting away there, cutting that section away, removing that and that, and then snipping across just this top corner so that when it folds in it's not going to catch or get caught on anything. So we'll repeat that again, so straight up to the second score line. Up again, cut across on the diagonal, cut the bottom section off, cut up and up, and then just snip across that corner. Same with this one. Now you could put whatever you like on the top of this box. You can have paper on it, you can, um, I don't know, whatever you like. At the moment, I just want to get this done so then Kerry can make her box. So that's bits done. And we will now put it together. So I'm going to add adhesive on these two end sections. So I, I find glue is the better deal here but today because all of a sudden it started to rain the glue is taking a little bit longer to adhere there we go so we'll do this next one fold that down and adhere it into place then I'm going to pull the two tabs in, put a little friend there, place adhesive on here and on this one and I'm going to bring those corners up to match so it gives me a right angle. Give it a minute to grab, same with this one. Bring it up, give it a minute to grab. Now fold in your other two ends and repeat. Oh gosh, getting glue everywhere. So we'll just put that into there. So nice right angle. 
just pinch it till it, the, the glue goes off. Same on this end. Oh, oh I forgot to tell you all. I now have a new grandson. He finally arrived. He arrived on Tuesday in a very unorthodox manner. My daughter went into labour in the early hours of the morning and she thought she'd have plenty of time. And she rang me at half past five to tell me that she was in labour and that um, I'd be looking after my granddaughter today, that day who wasn't well and the other two were going to school. And just before I left home to go there, she said, it's okay, Mum, George has arrived. So she gave birth at home on the kitchen floor. So, yes. And he was a good size. Mother and daughter, uh, mother and son are both doing very well. He weighed seven pound, uh, eight pounds, seven ounces. I need to get things right, don't I? So, yes, yeah, so he's all very beautiful and I've already had my cuddle with him I felt very privileged so there's our box space all done we'll set that aside now we're going to start on the lid and we're going to cut that exactly the same way as we cut the base so up up snip that off So it's just exactly the same way. And we're going to do that on all four sides. Oh, shoot, I can't see. Last one. They don't take very long to make, just as long as you remember that there is a formula to them. You just have to follow the formula and you'll always come out with a with a good box. Right, let's get rid of that. Right now, same deal, I'll put the end bits on first. So it's just going to be exactly the same way. There'll be just one slight difference. And I found that if I do this every time, I end up with a, a, a box that fits perfectly together. Bring in those side pieces, the little tabs. And it's best to do two of them at once. So there's one. So you've got that nice right angle. And the other end. And then with this one here, I like to fold that in. And I'm going to fold these two edges back out of the way for the minute. Because I'm not putting them down yet. And we're going to place adhesive on here. And then I'm taking the box and I'm going to place the box on the inside. So then I know I'm going to get a nice snug fit. So then I will bring those pieces down and create the right angle there and there. And now I know that it's a perfect fit for the base. So I'll just give that a minute to set. 
My hands are covered in glue as always. It's one of my favourite pastimes. Take the base out. Now we will take our glue and adhere these sections down. So I'm just pressing that into place. I'm going to be overzealous with the glue. Press that down. I mean, if you've got, if you want, you can make this this section deeper. But I just think the half an inch was just seemed enough to me. And here we have our lid. So now that should give me a really nice smooth fit. So it's on, doesn't come off, so and it just fits nicely into place. So I hope you enjoyed this little um, box tutorial today. Like I said, you can decorate that however you wish. And there's the one I made before. And I've just put the... Um, like I just did the matting because it's six by so the matting is five and three quarters by um, four and three quarter three and three quarters and then this is three and a half by five and a half for the paper but you could put whatever you like on it so I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial today till next time keep on crafting and bye for now.